Today we're going to have a look at a Linux distribution we have looked at in the past. However, they've changed their package base and it is definitely worth bringing up for the project that they are working on, the distribution itself. Well, it's not one that I would run on the regular. It is actually one I keep around for a lot of interesting reasons we are going to show you in this video. So let's have a look at Amabuntus. Thanks for checking out this video from Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content where we look at Linux, why you might want to switch to Linux, and some of the things that are going on in the world of technology, etc., subscribe to the channel. Leave us a like and a comment down below. And today we are going to have a look at the Linux distribution called um, Ubuntu, uh, which used to be based on Ubuntu, and it is now based on Debian. I'm assuming the name comes from its root, uh, being based on Ubuntu, although I'm not 100% sure. It is not a US-based distribution, and mostly it is a collective of people who want to help eliminate e-waste and get computers into the hands of third world countries and places that otherwise cannot afford it. They do actually accept donations of used computers that still function, so they can run uh, and Ubuntu saw on it. I'm not sure like the distribution itself doesn't. I don't don't know all of the ins and outs of that. But you can have a look at their website. You can see under the collective, you can see the team, what they're trying to do, uh, the very interviews, the contact. They have a lot of information about the distribution itself. Now, one of the reasons I like this distribution is because it is lightweight and it comes pre-installed with probably more applications than the typical person wants. But it gives us a chance to play around with some applications. And it does have extra built-in tools like USB creators and even a Ventoy creator and updater. So uh, this is one to keep around that you can throw into a virtual machine and you can use it to create Ventoy builds and things like that. Test different software, stuff like that. So this is actually one of the ones that I will keep a copy of it around for the variety of software it has available and what it is attempting to accomplish. Uh, they do have their reuse campaign, and you can download the distribution. Um, here's a, let's see, I thought I had the download somewhere. All right, so here is the distribution information itself. Now, this version here, the Debian Edition 5, is based on Debian 12. The default desktop environment is XFCE, with the ability to drop down to LXQT if you have a um, a piece of hardware that is a lot more limited. Uh, they did actually mention up here that uh, they have a video for reasons why they switched to Debian. The video is not in English. I cannot supply you the reasons. And uh, as far as I could tell, I could not find any text on the site to tell me why. I can theorize that, uh, A, it is because Debian does support a lot more, uh, a lot more computers, uh, including older 32-bit systems, and there are still versions of Ubuntu in 32-bit that are not going to be 64-bit uh, for older systems. So here we have the 32 and the 64-bit. You can still get the older versions, um, which is based on Debian 11 and then Debian 10. Um, so I don't know, maybe they, I guess it looks like they probably made this switch a while ago. It's been a few years since we've looked at M Ubuntu. So you can download it and they do have, it looks like three supported versions and then maybe four supported versions. And then they have some obsolete versions. You can still download the obsolete ones if you have a reason to go with those. Now, as far as the software itself, this does have a lot of software in it. And this is, for me, one of the reasons I like keeping around. First, you have eight languages built in. So you have English, French, Spanish, Arabic, Germ uh, German, Italian, Portuguese, and Danish. And then as far as software, I don't know why they don't have one browser, uh, but they have uh, uBlock and Lilo on that. They have Thunderbird and then Pigeon and Jammy for instant messaging, FileZilla and Transmission for data transfers. They have several collaboration work, office automation, a lot of audio, video, uh, photos, just a ton of different software packages that are available to you when you are using the distribution itself. So this is a good way to keep a computer uh, up and running. And it's also a really good distribution to keep around to play around with extra software you may not be as familiar with and to get a chance to 
use things like the USB creators and the uh, Ventoy creator that it has pre-installed on it. So Ventoy is something you are interested in and you can't get it installed any other way. It is becoming easier, but in the past it was a little bit harder. Then you could go ahead and run uh, this distribution, uh, whether on a a live drive or on a virtual machine and you can go ahead and create it. So what we're going to do here today is instead of installing it, we are going to have a look at the live version of it. So when you jump on over to the virtual machine, you can go into uh, whichever version of the language you want. You can do speech synthesis on and off and you can test your sound card, I guess, shortcut R. We're going to jump on in with English, obviously. And then here we can do try it. Uh, without install or install it using Calamaris. We can try it without the install, which is a fail safe. And then um, there's a couple other options in there as well. Hey, we even have a text mode. That's exciting. We're just going to go into the first option. And once we are into here, then it will present us with some setup options. Okay, so when we first load up, we have this screen we are presented with. So it gives us uh, the ability to test out, do you want to switch to the LXQT desktop or continue to work under the XFCE? Of course, if you have this installed on the login screen, you can choose which one of those from, from the menu there. And with this case here, we're just going to go ahead and stick around with XFCE as it works. You have the option to change your keyboard map. Right now it's US. We're going to... Uh, change that and now we have the ability to do a desktop configuration. So it's starting out with Cairo Dock, which is their main application launcher. So you can activate the dock or not. You can lock uh, the default dock. You can activate the taskbar, activate workspace, activate Redshift, clipboard manager. Uh, you can activate the dark theme or the various sound events. And then you can change all of these settings later on going into the settings and Ubuntu's and desktop. We'll go ahead and activate the Cairo dock. And then which dock version you want. We have all for all applications. We have the simple for newbies and my dear old aunt. And we have the basic for children or beginners. We'll just go ahead and stick with the simple basic default. And now we have a beautiful Cairo dock down at the bottom which uh, gives us kind of memories of the old skeuomorphic Mac, which is just absolutely beautiful, in my opinion. I like this. Maybe I'm an old school boomer, but that's my, my take. We have tutorials. We have a Debian handbook, Debian reference. We have a software center here. Uh, we have a settings manager. We have tools. And let's go ahead and click in on our tools as well. So here is the live Ventoy creator. So you can, uh, if you put a USB drive in here, you can select the drive and then you can look at which version of Ventoy and then uh, you can go ahead and install Ventoy onto that particular device. Uh, we also have under our tools a USB creator. So start with the image, select the, the individual book or drive, excuse me, and then a USB formatter. We have the OS uninstaller, a boot repair disk information. We have BleachBit, Doc, System Sounds, also Mixer, and then some printer options in here. Here's Brother Printer Drivers, HP Drivers, Configuration, Turbo Print, and then System Information, and etc. So there's a number of really good tools in here. Uh, here is your settings manager. This is just your basic XFCE settings manager. But there are a few extra tools in here. So uh, here's the desktop. So you can activate the taskbar, activate the dark themes, etc. And then we have the Ubuntu's tools, which is the same tool menu we just saw. And I think there might be a couple other down here. Let's go ahead and have a look. That is all I see off the top of my head. Uh, let's see if I can get that software center to load. It was loading on my initial tests. Basically a, a simple software center, kind of like what we saw in, um, kind of like MX Linux. Looks like that may not want to be starting. I don't know. We'll, we'll give that a minute, see what happens. And I believe there's actually a button for it down here somewhere too. Here's our full applications menu. Of course, we can still right-click it over here if you want to access it um, down here. But you can see that there is just a ton of software in here. This is why I probably wouldn't run it for my daily driver, but we do have uh, a lot of software in here. If you need a, a quick piece of software for something or you want to 
test out some piece of software, this is a good one to keep around. Uh, we do have a non-free option as well. So if you go into your non-free software installer, uh, this will give us an option to install your Codex and various fonts. So here's Codex, Arial Microsoft Fonts, Calibri Microsoft Fonts. And then they're not supported, of course. They're giving you all those. So you can click OK and install those onto your system. Of course, if we do it live here, then um, obviously I would have to reinstall that every single time. So we're not going to do that. Here these are broken down into your individual categories. So here's your office suite. So we have Home Bank. We have Calibri. Uh, the LibreOffice Start. We have under audio, we have Clementine and then a number of different things. Audio Ripper. Here's your video. Photos. Viewer, Scan Tool, and GIMP. Here's um, XF Burn for burning CDs. Under your interests, here's uh, Steam and uh, GOG. And then your education. We have typing, math. I've never, not gotten the math game to actually load. But here's mine test, LibreOffice for schools. I'm not sure if that's different from the LibreOffice system. I booted it up and uh, it was, uh, it basically just gave me LibreOffice. Hmm, okay. A, it looks like we have a GNOME Software Center just popped up. That's not the same software installer I saw before. Uh, just for clarity, uh, I did see quite a bit different one. Here's Pack. Oh, this is the one I was looking at before. All right, let's get rid of the GNOME Software Center. That's kind of horrible. So here is various packages. Um, so you can install different things, you know, KDE Desktop, etc. cetera. Um, it looks like uh, looks like it might be waiting to update the apt cache. Okay, so I'm not sure why the package cache is not updating. Um, I clicked the um, refresh package lists, and it just says waiting in queue. So I'm not sure what's going on. Let me check if this thing has internet. Uh, that would uh, possibly be an issue. Let's see. Testing. Interesting. Uh, so, okay, it's verifying successful. So it apparently it is on the internet, but I could not get the package cache to refresh. Okay, well, internet seems to be working. Not sure why this is just waiting in queue. Um, I can't remember if it was like that when I was doing my first initial testing or not. It could be something related to we have not installed the system as well. There might be an issue with that. Let's have a brief look at the installer for anybody interested in that. Here we have an OEM install and a classic install. So here is your installer. So it's gonna it's waiting for a module to load up. Give it just a second. We can select our language here. Okay, so just a brief update. While I was waiting for the installer to go up, I went ahead and opened up the terminal and just did a sudo apt update. And that is actually apparently what I need to do to fix all this kind of stuff. So now we can see our packages are up to date and our installer is ready to go as well. Like this was lagging around for quite a while. So I went ahead and uh, just did a sudo apt update and that seemed to fix all of our major issues. So here you can just select everything. You can uh, replace, erase a disk, do manual partitioning. We'll do swap to a file. This might be, okay, this, so that worked. Uh, there are a few issues uh, with the Calamaris installer in some versions that when you uh, went down to swap to something, it would cause some weirdness. We're not going to run through the full installation process here, but from here we just enter the name and the password and then hit the install, and then we are set to go. Oop, let's hit, yes, we'll close out of there. And uh, booting up the installer seemed to get rid of my Cairo doc as well, so... Um, see if I can get my Cairo doc back. Now I might have to just reboot the system or uh, doc restoration. Okay, there it goes. So there's a there's an application for that. There's a script to uh, get your doc back. So that's what I need to do for there. So there is a, a nice little compelling distribution. This is one that you might download and you may not use it on a regular basis, but it certainly is a 
Um, it certainly is a distribution you could download and keep around for references, for the tools, for some of the software it has. And this really is a nice project with a good and noble goal to keep e-waste out of the landfills and to get computers in the hands of people who may not otherwise be able to afford them. So that's really why I like this uh, piece of software and want to do uh, more views on it, you know, more videos on it, exposure, more exposure to the organization as they're as they're working on this. So there is a brief look at Emabuntu, uh, now based on Debian, I guess, for the last few versions. It's been a while since I looked at this distro, so uh, I did want to get a refresher in there. Uh, so with that, go guys, uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so, if you like this type of uh, review content, looking at Linux software and things like that. With that, thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.